Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and we are back with the weekly ranking show yet again for 2023. Uh, the first episode for 2023. It's a weekly series that we go through every single week of the season, all the way up to the final weeks in November. And we have a massive start to the season because the Australian Open seedings are locked in. That was it. One week to get your ranking right. And now it's locked in. You are going to be seeded at this stage of the Australian Open. Let's go see who won last week because we had some big names in the top 10 getting some crucial wins. Let's start with the United Cup, which was a huge tournament involving a lot of top 10 players. And the USA defeated Italy 4-0. to zero, And it really did help Pagula, Fritz, and even Berrettini, who made the final, solidify their ranking and maybe even give themselves a little boost in Berrettini's case going into the Australian Open. So huge tournament. A lot of big names played it. Heading over to Auckland now for the WTA and Coco Goff. She got a big win beating Masarova in the final 6-1, 6-1. Her ranking didn't change, but a huge confidence boost for Coco to start off 2023. Over at the Adelaide Open, the first edition of it, Sabalenka, she got a win over Nuskova, 6-3, 7-6 in the final. A huge win for her, so two players in the top 10 really giving themselves a lot of confidence going into Australia in a week's time. Over in India, we had the Pune Open with Grigsport getting the win over Bonzi, 4-6-7-5-6-3. That tournament sort of hit under the radar because we had so many big names playing in the first week. Great win there from Grigsport getting a title. And the Adelaide Open for the men, the first edition. Novak Djokovic saving championship points to get the win over Sebastian Korda. He is back on track in Australia, back to his winning ways. He saved championship point in the second set. He won at 6-7-7-6-6-4. He is well and truly the one to beat in Melbourne starting next week. All right, we're going to start with the WTA rankings now. And there is not much to talk about because the rankings didn't change all that much. They did really close the gap, some players on others, but it didn't really change. Shviontek obviously still number one, despite losing to Pagula. She's well and truly the best player. Jabir comes in at number two, just ahead of Pagula, who's at number three. There's only about 200 points between them, so come the Australian Open, that might change. But for the seedings, that stays. Garcia comes in at number four. Sabalenka at five. Zachary at six. Goff, despite winning last week, she comes in at seven. Kazakina comes in at eight. Kudamatova at nine. But we have a change down the bottom with some Mona Halep dropping out of the top 10 and Madison Keys going up into that 10th spot. And that is what the top 10 seeds will look like for the Australian Open. And unless we have an injury or someone pulls out, they are the top 10 seeds locked and loaded going into the first slam of the year. Let's go have a look at the ATP rankings now and a lot more changes on the men's side. Starting at the top though, Alcaraz, he stays at number one. Unfortunately, won't be playing the Australian Open, so... He won't be the number one seed, but he is still number one. Rafa Nadal comes in at number two. Root at three. City Pass at four. Djokovic at five. Now, as I mentioned, Alcaraz being out of the Australian Open means that the top four seeds will be Nadal one, Root two, City Pass three, and Djokovic four, which is a huge boost for Djokovic. Means he doesn't have to play any of those guys until the semifinals. So no Nadal Djokovic match until the semifinals at the earliest. But we do have a change in the second half of the top 10 with Andre Rublev going up two spots despite losing in the first round of Adelaide. He goes up two spots to number six, pushing OJ Aliassim and Medvedev both down. And that's because Aliassim didn't back up the points from the ATP Cup last year. And Medvedev lost a bunch of points as well from the ATP Cup last year. Fritz comes in at number nine, and it changed on the bottom with Hubi Hercatch dropping out of the top 10. And Holger Runa jumping into the top 10. And that's because Hubi Hercatch also lost a bunch of points from this time last year and allowed Runa to get back into that top 10. So there you have it. They are the rankings for this week. We don't have any ATP or WTA finals race yet because after one week, it looks really, really weird. We don't have a lot of the big names that we expect to be playing the WTA and ATP finals. There's some players that have played challenger events, so they're up in the top 10. So we'll go through that after the Australian Open uh, because it's a little bit of a weird list at the moment. So first week of February, that's when we'll go through the ATP finals race. But uh, let me know down in the comments below. Are you shocked at any of the rankings? Remember, the seedings are set now. Australian Open seedings are set. They are going to be the top 10 seeds that we went through on both the men and the women, unless there's an injury in the next week. And there are a lot of injuries on the ATP and WTA. We know Djokovic isn't 100%. Jabir looks injured. So maybe keep an eye on this space. But let me know down in the comments below. Are you shocked at any of the rankings? Or are you surprised that some players aren't higher ranked than you expected?